Hey, what's happening? You I'm Sir James coming at you guys with another video and happy belated new year. Welcome to 2020. I can't wait to see what's going to happen throughout this year. I already know some things, but I'm pretty sure there'll be plenty of surprises along the way. And thank you guys so much. You guys killed it for 2019. I didn't think my channel was going to get where it was. And I'm more than halfway from my dream goal of reaching 100k. It's just it's so good. It's just like I can't wait for that moment once I reach 100k. It's just I'm going to get really emotional, that's for sure. Uh, but anyway, since I'm trying to kill some time until the new Rise of the Resistance opens up at Disneyland, I had asked you guys if you were interested in me reviewing some of these Star Wars Hot Toys figures, and you guys said yes. So anyways, the first review that I have for the beginning of the new year is this DX-16 Darth Maul. If you are a Darth Maul fan and a Hot Toys collector, this is definitely a worthy investment into your personal collection. But anyways, before the review begins, I just want to note two things. First off, I am using a brand new camera, so let me know how the video quality looks to you guys. I'm still kind of getting used to it because I've never used a Sony camera before. And the one in question here is the Sony a6400. I chose this one because it has 4K capabilities. The Canon M50 that I had technically did, but the problem with the 4K option on that one is that it's got a huge crop factor. And at the same time, you, you lose a lot of the autofocusing features when you go into 4K, unless if you're manually doing it, which is kind of hard to do if you're a one-man show. While the Sony one, on the other hand, can record 4K, has a very little crop factor, and doesn't lose any of its autofocusing features. But anyways, I'm done stalling this video. Let's go ahead and get to the review. You guys can let me know how the quality looks to you. Until then... I'll see you guys on the next upload and enjoy the DX16 Darth Maul by Hot Toys. All right, so before we take a look at all the accessories, which there's a lot by the way, I figured let's go ahead and take a closer look at the figure, starting with the head sculpt. So as you can see, just out of the box, he looks absolutely fantastic. And what's neat about this DX Hot Toys Darth Maul is that he actually has two different head sculpts. You have the first one that you have right here, which is more of a serious basic tone face. That's pretty much for the most part most of his expression, at least in episode one. However, he also has an alternate head sculpt, which looks like this which looks very, very good. On each of the different headpieces, you also have the signature earring on his ear. But just keep note that when it comes to the headpieces, you might want to be extra cautious with his horns because one, they're actually quite sharp, and two, they can be quite fragile. But what's neat is that if you did want to swap the different heads, you don't have to worry about utilizing any force because typically with the Hot Toys figure, if you needed to change the head, you typically have to pop off the head to pop in a new one. But what's nice about this one is that the head is actually magnetic. And I want to go ahead and show you and demonstrate how easy and fast it is to change the head pieces starting right now. So let's go ahead and switch the heads now. And boom, just like that, it's as simple as that. So let's go ahead and change it back once again. That's how quick and easy it is just to change the head sculpt. So you don't have to worry about popping up the head, popping it in, or doing any damage to the horns that may be presented there. So very simple. If you look on the back or bottom of one of these, again, you got this nice uh, little felt piece here for the magnetic. And there's actually the purr system for the eyes. So there's actually a tool in the accessories portion of this video where you can go ahead and use the tool to move the eyes in different directions. So you could have them looking left, right, up and down. If you want him to be cross-eyed, you can absolutely do that if you wanted to. So again, you do have plenty of options. Now, even though this is a magnetic headpiece, that doesn't mean he's very limited as far as his, as far as his head movements. You could still have him looking down. You could still have him looking up you know left and right so i think this is great honestly i wish if not all hot toys would utilize this magnetic system i don't know if it would pay a factor in the pricing but i really like that. It's better than popping off the heads at least in my personal opinion now what's neat about also darth maul here is that typically when it comes to a hot toys figure it really depends on the figure of what kind of posabilities and restrictions you may have. Typically, it's a, if it's a heavily armored type of figure, you may have restrictions in the movement. But if you have a figure like Darth Maul here, where most of his clothing is basically just fabric material, 
you really aren't going to get any type of hindrance as far as posability goes. You're going to have the same basic restrictions as a human body would have. I mean, you could probably alternate a little bit further than that. But any human-like, if not alien-like moves that Darth Maul could possibly wield or pull off in the movies, you could recreate right at home. Uh, so go ahead and give you guys a little bit of a closer look as far as the detailing goes. Uh, again, the fabric is just absolutely nice. Uh, even his belt here is nicely made. It's like a pleather material. And over here is actually a clip where you can actually attach his lightsaber, which I happen to have right here. Just clip that into place, and then there you go. It's as simple as that. Now, what I also like the fact is that his tabards down here actually have wires in them. So as you can see, it's a little bit fluffed up, kind of like there's a breezer going on because I actually had them in a pose, but you guys are going to see that towards the end of some of the posing options. But the fact that these are wired actually gives you a little bit more freedom and more options to utilize with this guy, depending on exactly what you want to do. And I think that's just absolutely good. I like figures that have wires in their clothing and just kind of gives you more freedom. Um, but yeah, like I said, that is the figure himself. So what I want to go ahead and do next is to share with you guys all the accessories that he includes because there's a lot of them. And then afterwards, before I end off the video, I actually want to go ahead and put him in a few different poses, a few of his different outfits that he has that you can utilize. So that way you guys can get a little bit more of a basic idea if this is a figure that you want to add to your collection. So let's go ahead and get that started. All right, so let's go ahead and get a closer look at all the accessories that he includes, starting with the largest one, and that is the base. Even if you still get the DX16 here, you do get the much larger base here. You actually get a dynamic stand here, so you can go ahead and pose him in all kinds of different ways. You do have two different locking spots. You have one in the center here, which again, if you have the DX17, that's where the speeder will go with the alternate cover piece, or you can go ahead and put it back here. And again, you can even do some dynamic poses with the speeder and Maul on the same stand if you have the space and you do get the nice Star Wars Darth Maul etching there up on the front. Now moving this out of the way, uh, the first thing that you actually do get out of the box though is you actually get this nice metal card here with Darth Maul on there. And you flip it on over to the other side, it says Star Wars Darth Maul, the 1-6 scale collectible figure with the DX lineup on the left hand side and Hot Toys on the right. Now moving over, there's all kinds of different things, so let's go ahead and start with clothing. He actually does include this thick robe that we've seen him wear when he was on the planet of Tatooine when he was hunting down uh, Padme Amidala. Which is very neat. It's actually pretty easy to put on. Some people like this, some people don't, so it really depends on how you want to pose him. So again, if you do have the included speeder, you can go ahead and have this on him or recreate the scene where he's utilizing the drone and binoculars. Again, you have all sorts of different freedom of movement to go ahead and utilize. Uh, next up, let's go ahead and talk about his iconic lightsaber. Now, when it comes to the lightsaber, he includes a non-LED and LED. So let's go ahead and start with the LED option. So you actually do get one of the LED double-bladed handle. And it does include the batteries that you need to power this on. So once you have the batteries installed, there's a switch here. So you can go ahead and ignite that to have them light up. I don't know how well it's going to appear on camera and I'm actually not going to really put this on my figure because honestly the LED options for these are pretty weak. I mean they just they're not as bright even if I were to turn off the lights it still wouldn't look as nice to be honest which is why I typically don't really use this. Now besides the double bladed option in a portion of the movie his saber does get cut so now you have the single saber. What's neat is that you also have the effect on the bottom where it's been cut, and I like the attention to detail. And same thing, once the batteries are installed, you can go ahead and light that up if you wanted to. But I prefer using the non-LED. Now with the non-LED, you also have a couple options. Again, you have the double-bladed option. You can actually remove this if you wanted to. This is just for purely clipping onto his belt. If you don't want to use it, you just go ahead and remove it. But I want to keep it on there because it's really tiny. I don't want to lose it, but as you can see, it looks great. And if you want to create the, uh, again, portion of the movie where his saber has already been cut, you could actually remove this in the center. 
If you take this option here, there's one other accessory inside the box that you actually plug in on the bottom here. And again, you can go ahead and recreate where the saber has been cut once again. When it comes to the saber, you also have two of the standard blade options. And you also have two of the effect options too to have the saber uh, appear like it's swinging in motion. You also get these really cool looking binoculars, which are actually nice and weathered. Here's the tool that I talked about earlier where you could actually use to move the eyes around with the PER system. You have two additional cufflinks here. So again, you can recreate the scene where he's utilizing his little uh, spy droid. Speaking of the spy droid, that is actually also included, whether or not you get the DX-16 or even the DX-17. Now the spy droid actually comes in a few different parts. You have the main sphere itself. You also have the antenna piece. Just be cautious with this because it can break easily. And you also have the included stand. Now keep note that the stand is actually pretty flimsy. So if I just go ahead and have him here, as you can see, he tends to wobble around quite a bit. So you may want to add either extra weight to the stand or just not use them at all. It kind of depends up to you, personal preference. And last but not least is all the extra hands that were not on the figure already. And some of these are going to be utilized, again, for his accessories. And we have two more here. And that takes care of all the accessories. So next I'm gonna go ahead and pose them in a few different ways.